next talk from Philip, and his talk is going to be about how to migrate from July point zero point four to the most recent versions. So, uh, right, uh, Philip, uh, your stage. Thank you, Dimitri. Um, so, hi all. Thank you for uh, coming out in this weather. Uh, my name is Philip, and I work at Akamai uh, on a performance product called Impulse. Right. Uh, welcome to my stadium. Sorry, I mean my talk <laughs> uh, on migrating directly from Julia 0.4 to 1.6. So we launched our product in 2011, but we only added uh, Julia capabilities in 2014. At the time, we were using Julia 0.2, but we very quickly migrated to 0.3 because naturally, uh, even 0.3 was better than MATLAB. <laughs> Uh, Julia was moving very quickly, so by 2015, we migrated to 0.4. Our code base was fairly small. We had very few customers depending on this functionality. And uh, Julia was improving a lot. So I, could, I attended JuliaCon that year in 2015, and I was already convinced this, we're going to be using this language for a long time. It's already better than Python. <laughs> so uh, I was hooked in 2015, and as you can see, I'm still hooked under this. So over the next, uh, next few years, uh, we were adding a lot of features, and we had more customers depending on this functionality. Many of our customers were large websites. They did not want us to change our code too often. We couldn't change APIs, and therefore, we kind of got stuck on 0.4 for a while. I was also kind of assuming that migrating from 0.4 to 5 or 6 or 7 would be as easy as migrating from 0.3 to 0.4. So I was wrong on that. Um, but we were building these features and uh, really liking the language a lot. So in about 2019, uh, to in 2018, uh, Julia 1.0 came out. And 2019, it became the long-term support uh, release. So we decided uh, we're going to try migrating to 1.0. And the recommendation was uh, first move to 0 0.7. You'll get a lot of compat errors. Fix all of them, and then 1.0 should be easy enough to do. But that was just taking so long to do, because we had this huge code base, and it just trial and error one module at a time. So uh, we decided, screw it. You know, we're just going to go directly to 1.0. But this whole process took more than two years. And while we were migrating to 1.0, 1.1 came out, and 1.2 came out, and 1.3, and 4. And then 1.5 came out, and there were so many new features that I wanted to use. And performance was so much better. So I said, I spoke to our management team. And uh, we said, if we're going to make our customers move, we need to make them move only once. So we're going to go straight to 1.5. I started working on 1.5. And uh, 1.6 was announced as the LTS. So I said, screw this. We're going to start, <laughs> going to just move over to 1.6. And so we started the migration to 1.6. And we finished it about the same time that 1.7 was released which means 1.6 was officially tagged as LTS. So we were able to get something out on time. And uh, so I, I started working in the stock, and I submitted it. But unfortunately, the stock is now obsolete, because as we've heard from the start of the conference, uh, 1.6 is no longer LTS. It's going to be 1.10. Uh, luckily, the migration will not be as long. So um, I'm first going to go into what we actually need to change to move from 0 0.4 to 1.6. And uh, in all, there are close to 40 changes. I know the slide has only five. That's not everything, all right? That's not even the only slide. So there are about 40 changes, but hopefully you do not need to do this migration ever. And so I'm not going to read through all 40, and I'm not going to cover all of them. Uh, just probably one on each slide. In this case, the, the change of uh, all of the finds, so find first, find last, find next, uh, find all, they used to return 0 on the case where it could not find something. From 1.0 onwards, it started returning nothing. So we had to change signatures a lot of places. We had to change. We could not do a comparison with uh, 0 or just add 1 to it, for example. Uh, we had to do an is nothing check. Fairly easy, but it was the hardest thing to do on this slide. Um, but more importantly, I think, with the migration, was a good chance to relearn a lot of uh, Julia assumptions and thoughts of how to program Julia. Uh, broadcasting, for example, was so much better in the 1.x series 
1.5, it became so much faster. So we learned how to do broadcast across all of our code base. Instead of uh, operating in loops, use broadcast to broadcast our operators or our functions onto arrays and take advantage of things that the language already provides. So in, in this case, uh, round was the, the function that pushed us over that, because round used to work on arrays, and then it stopped working on arrays. And uh, so we started looking at broadcast. Um, some other things we did was we used to use tick and talk a lot to measure how long sections of our code took. And we would measure that and send that to our telemetry so that we could optimize uh, pieces of code that were used a lot by customers. And tick and talk just disappeared in 1.0. So we had to figure out a, a replacement for it. Luckily, there are lots of ways to time things in Julia. So there's the at time macro. There's the time underscore ns if you want high precision time. So we, use, uh, we ended up writing our own macro that measures the time of a block of code and also sends the results to our telemetry. So that simplified a lot of code across the code base. Um, more with the Find family. This, this seems to be a, a theme across our migration. Once we fixed one thing with Find, we found another thing. Uh, working with strings, if you try to find a character in a string, the order of uh, parameters changed. So it's not like we could do a search and replace for where we had the order correctly. We had to manually look at every single uh, call to Find to figure out if we were doing it the right way or not. And, uh, in general, this made things better. It makes it more consistent with contains and occurs in and uh, functions that can do fix one and fix two. So we liked the change. It was just hard to do. Logging is so much better, right? Yeah, or so much easier. You just chain, add the at rate macro uh, before all of your info or warn, and you're done. Uh, the only difference being error, e, which was ERR in Julia 0.4, became error in uh, 1.0. If you use error in, uh, without the macro call, it throws an error exception. So you have to be very careful about only putting the macro symbol where you actually need it. So most of these changes, uh, most of the changes to our code base were because of changes in data frames and not so much the language itself. Um, so I, it's not Julia's fault, but we had to make these changes. Um, some of the, the biggest one that affected us here was when you call names on a data frame, previously it would return an array of symbols. And with 1.0 onwards, it returns an array of strings. So we had to go through all of our code and see if we were looking for symbols within the, the return value of names or not, and, and change that accordingly. Uh, there were a few more changes, but not too hard to deal with. Again, search and replace kind of fixed almost all of these cases for us. Um, testing became so much better. Um, as, like I said, we have 40 items that uh, customers uh, need to worry about if you're in the general public. Only 36 of those matter for you. Hopefully, you do are not on 0 0.4, and zero of these matter to you. So to do the migration, um, we followed a, a fairly straightforward procedure. It is not something I ever want to do again. Luckily, the migration to 1.10 is not going to be as hard. Right? It's essentially going to be these two changes. Um, most people won't have to worry about it. So where args, if you ever use, uh, look for the type of the where args in your function. It, you, it's always been where args, but previously it was a subtype of type, and now it's not a subtype of type. So that's a change. And then uh, if you ever use test logs in your tests, sometimes there is new amounts of white space in the log messages. So that's uh, pretty much all I have. Uh, thank you for coming out and listening to me. And happy migration. Thanks, Philip. It was a great talk. Uh, in the interest of time, we have to move to the next speaker. But okay. please catch up with Philip after the talk if you have some questions. And I hope uh, next year we will be hearing about how to migrate from July 1.6 to 1.10. Sure. <laughs> all right. Thank you.